In this video, I'm gonna share five reasons to like the Ricoh GR and the GR3X. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I'm going to share five reasons to like the Ricoh GR3 and the GR3X cameras. And after that, I also have a couple of things that I think could be improved. I have not used the GR3X yet, because when I'm recording this, it's such a new model. However, based on what I've seen so far, the only major difference between this and the X is the lens. This one has a 28mm and the X has a 40mm equivalent lens. But other than that, there are no other major differences and therefore what I'm going to say in this video applies to both models. And the choice of lens is up to you which one you prefer better 28 or 40 millimeter. But without any further small talk, let's get to the point and number one, the extremely compact size. I mean, look at this thing. It's smaller than my phone. Okay, it's a little bit thicker, but still it is a very small camera by any standards, especially if you consider that there is a relatively big APS-C sensor inside here. And because of this really small size, this camera is really easy to take with you every time you go out and even if you are not planning to take any pictures. This can easily fit in your you know, jeans pocket or pretty much anywhere and it's easy to even just to carry around uh, with this uh, wrist uh, strap that is included. I think this is included with the can't remember anymore, but I think this is included with the, with the camera when you buy it. Number two, the ergonomics. This is a small camera. We established that already, but they have still managed to include enough controls. There are basically three command dials, the back dial or the switch that you operate with your thumb. It's not a real dial, but it works the same way and it's really comfortable to use. Then there is a, a proper mode dial and some buttons too. And you can customize this to your liking and make it your camera that you like to use. But the control layout is not too crowded either. I find this camera very comfortable and reliable to use and I never hit any like wrong buttons or wrong dials. Some cameras have so many buttons all over the place that you constantly keep hitting wrong buttons and activating some functions that you never intended to use, at least in that particular situation, and that can be very frustrating. Number three, the features. This is a small camera, like we already established, but despite of the small size, this camera is packed with features. There is, for example, a built-in ND filter, and that is very practical because the leaf shutter in the lens has some limitations. For example, at wide open aperture, the shortest shutter speed is one two thousandth of a second. And without the ND filter, you might not be able to use that wide open aperture in bright sunlight. And then in some other situation, the ND filter can help you to use longer shadow speed and to get some motion blur in your picture if you want to. And there are so many other cool features packed in this camera, too many to mention in this video, but you can do a lot of things with this camera even though it is a, a tiny camera. And number four, image quality. I think I've said it a couple of times already that this is a small camera, but the image quality is big. And I think one of the reasons is that this camera has a fixed prime lens, 28 millimeter equivalent lens, maximum aperture f2.8. And because this is a fixed lens, the manufacturer could pair the sensor and the lens perfectly. And the pictures are incredibly sharp at every aperture and the high ISO performance is also really good. The technical perfection, of course, is not everything far from it. But if you know that the camera is going to deliver, then you can concentrate more on the content 
without ever having to worry about the technical things. Number five, the fun factor. This is a fun camera to use and that is very, very important. I think it's the most important like feature. I don't know if you can call it a feature, whatever. Most important feature on any camera because if you are not enjoying your camera, you're not going to use it no matter how good the camera would be. Uh, technically or how many good features, other features it has. You are not going to use it if you are not enjoying it. And that's why I think the fun factor is really important and this camera is fun to use. And then a couple of things that could be improved and uh, something I wish they would improve uh, maybe in the GR4 if there's ever going to be a Mark IV version of this camera. And the first is the battery life. I generally don't have or haven't had much problems with the battery life in my shooting. I turn on the camera, take some pictures, turn it off and this is a very responsive camera. The startup time is really fast so there's no problem uh, turning on the camera when you kind of expect to take a picture. But if you for example use the time-lapse feature you're going to drain the battery really really fast. And um, even though I haven't had any major problems with the battery life in my shooting I recommend a spare battery with this camera or at least a USB power bank so you can top up the battery whenever there's a suitable moment for that. And I get it, this is a small camera, you can't fit a really big battery in here, but I could tolerate maybe a little bit the bigger grip, for example, that could accommodate a little bit bigger battery too. And another improvement would be the viewfinder you can buy an accessory viewfinder, an optical viewfinder that you can mount on the hot shoe. But I so wish they also made an accessory electronic viewfinder that you could mount on the hot shoe. It would improve the practicality of this camera in bright daylight a lot and it would also be nice for some old school photographers like me who like to peek through a viewfinder. And then a couple of things that people usually complain about when they talk about the GR3. And one such thing is dust on the sensor. So far I haven't seen any dust on my camera's sensor, so I can't really comment on that. But I think one reason could be that because this camera is so tiny, it tends to be maybe exposed to some elements that your other cameras are never exposed to. I mean, you tend to put this in your jeans pocket or jacket pocket and in that pocket there could be some lint or dust or even sand. And that dust or sand might find its way on the sensor, on the surface of the sensor as well. So I think that might be one reason why these cameras tend to collect some dust uh, on the sensor. And of course it would be really really nice if this was a dust and splash resistant, but I think it could also make this, probably would make this more expensive and it could make this also a little bit bigger. But it would be nice if Ricoh can improve the ceiling of this camera and make it uh, dust and splash resistant without increasing the size too much and also without increasing the price too much. And another common complaint is low light autofocus. But I have to say I haven't really uh, experienced uh, any low light autofocus problems. Maybe it's because I've been using this now in the Finnish summer and the summer here is very like uh, bright, we don't have much low light, but still I have used this in some low light situations and I have to say the autofocus has performed much better than I expected. But what about you? Do you own the GR3 or have you used this camera? Please leave your experiences in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.